this video is just going to be a, well as the title says, uh, an XBMC emu station installation kind of walkthrough tutorial kind of thing. Basically, some folk are finding it difficult to understand how to set it up or where to place files and they've been asking for videos or a video or some way of a tutorial or some form of a tutorial, sorry. So I'm just doing this video. Uh, this, it's not a professional video, you know, I do what I can. Uh, when I do the Xbox it will be recorded on a phone because I don't have any way of recording the screen properly. So it gets done on the phone. So the audio quality is going to be different on that. There's nothing I can do. If somebody with a proper capture card etc wants to redo a video, then knock yourself out. But anyway, I'll go on with it. So on my GitHub, uh, the XBMC MU Station repository, there is a readme. It's readme or uh, readme.md. Now you click that and it gives you the instructions. It tells you a wee bit about the project. It gives you the instructions on how to install it or how to build it. So follow those um, and it's straightforward but essentially I'm going to skip the downloading part because well I've already got them downloaded. So essentially what you do is you click the first link in the installation bit and it will download the source. So it will download the XBMC emu station dash master dot zip. That is the latest version of the git. So that's the one you want. Uh, the second link will take you to a Google Drive page where you select the most up to date build of XBMC for Xbox. Now currently there isn't a 3.5.3 there even though I say to download that one just download the one that has the highest or the more up to date date. Uh, it's built from the latest revision on the SVN so it is 3.5.3 but it's just a more modern build. Um, it just fixes a scraper and we don't use scrapers so you know it, it doesn't really matter. So you get your two zips you put them in the same folder. Uh, in this case I'm using ZZIP or 7ZIP sorry or oh, ZZIP god 7ZIP so right click the both or highlight both right click and pick extract here. It will then do its thing and extract them to this directory. When it's finished we'll move the zip files out because they're no longer needed. Um, I'll also show you how to install ROMs. Um, now you can do this before transferring everything to the Xbox but I'll transfer the stuff to the Xbox and then I'll transfer the ROMs over um, because most people will do it that way and it's better if I show you how to do it that way because when you transfer more ROMs then well then you know how to do it. It's self-explanatory but you know. Uh, so we've got two folders. The XBMC folder has XBMC and the XBMC emu, emu station master folder has XBMC emu station in it. So you want to take the XBMC folder and plonk it into the XBMC emu station master folder. You then want to go into that folder and you want to click the build XBMC emu station dot bat. Now, if you are running version or beta eight or above you can just use the build xbmc emu station update dot bat but in this case we are just doing a clean install so you click the build it then takes about 20 seconds or so maybe less to build xbmc emu station and that's it done so i'll just explain there's 20 emulators installed by default so when you FTP this over to your Xbox there is 20 emulators. The emulators that are installed are in here. The only two emulators that don't get installed that are in this folder is FBA and MAME because these don't include the emulator. You have to download that yourself and FTP it over. The rest, Master System, PC Engine etc, Pet2x, 
all, in, all have the emulators. So all you have to do is add ROMs for those systems and you can play them. The FBA and main folder contain files that I need to do stuff when you scan in your ROMs. The main includes the database file, so when you load main, it doesn't spend five minutes extracting the database file. I just do it and then it loads straight into your ROM straight away, so it's a lot quicker. The FBA folder contains the Final Burn Legend ROM names. If you don't transfer that folder over, you will get zip file names. And the zip file names are... Uh, they're non-readable. Well, they're readable, but it's you don't know what ROMs what because the names are gobbly good. Some ROMs start with an A, but their actual name starts with an X. <laughs> so yeah, so all these fo all these files are copied in uh, to the emulator folder when you run the build bat. When you run the update bat, these are copied again. So if I update one of them, they get copied in, and you will just overwrite everything that's on your Xbox. So anyway, so. That's it built. It obviously it requires Windows. If you have a Mac, you will need some way of running a virtual machine to use Windows. If you can't build it, if you're a Windows user, don't ask me to build it. Build it yourself. If you're a Mac user and you're struggling and you can't get it, then I can build it for you, send it to you. Um, or Hopefully, if you ask some devs with a Windows PC, they can do it for you, etc. Um, but essentially, that's it. You double-click a batch file, you get a folder. So, FTP this to your Xbox. So, in this case, I've got Unleash X running. Uh, I've connected via FTP. Uh, you can already see an emu station folder on there. Um, I've renamed it so that it doesn't load it. Uh, with my soft mod, it automatically boots xbmc mu station from the C, E, or F partition. Um, my soft mod uh, has 24 boot paths, so essentially my soft mod covers all other soft mods boot paths. That's all of them because Sid, Crazy's, uh, Nadar, soft mod installer, all have different bloody dashboard paths. Instead of just having the same dashboard path, they all wanted different ones, so... SID fires on the root of E, uh, Crazy puts it in E dash, or E dashboard, and I think Nadar, God knows where that puts that one. But, essentially my soft mod covers all of them, so if you have an old soft mod, either update to mine, or find out where your boot path is. Uh, I'm not going to... It's, Essentially, if you're running Unleash X, press the Y button, scroll down, and it will tell you where your dashboard path is. Then what you do is, you take the files that are inside the XBM, XBMC emu station folder, you drag them, and you drag them over into the folder that is your boot path. Now be careful when doing this, because if you do it wrong, you could end up having to use a disk to fix it. Um, unfortunately, older soft mods just they wanted it a set way and they didn't give a toss about other soft mods it was my way on the highway so to speak um, so check where your boot path is copy it to where you need to copy it to um, don't go faffing about with shortcuts and stuff like that just do it properly or don't do it at all because um, I'm not responsible for your ass and stuff up um, TSOPs, chip users, just point your BIOS to it or point your shortcut to it. Uh, use are safer because you just can't ass it up. So, anyway, I'll just transfer mine into the E partition and I'll come back when it's finished, FTP and everything over. Yeah, don't worry about these. That's just Unleash X being a pain in the backside. Right, I'll be back in two minutes. Okay, so that's transferred over. So now I'll show you how to add ROMs to it. So in the ROMs folder I have SNES 
in this folder I have a few zip files. Now I'm not going to tell you where to get ROMs, uh, rip your own ROMs if you get them, uh, but that's up to you as what you do. Basically if you use resurrection extras ROM sets they come with images and they come with ROMs and they come with everything you need to set this up so that you get a nice look. So we're going to go into the XBMC MU station folder with FTP Dover in my case or if in your case wherever you installed it to we want to get into the dot MU station we want to get into the ROMs folder and we want to go down to SNES. We take these ROMs, we fire them in there. Done. That's your ROMs in oh crap, rang window. That's your ROMs installed. Media. SNES. And we have six folders. Now the videos folders, videos folder is where your previews go. Now your previews will match the exact same names as these files. So Free Ninjas Kickback dot zip will be Free Ninjas Kickback dot WMV XMV AVI MPG MP4 and they'll go in here. Screenshots again it will be Free Ninjas Kickback dot PNG. If you use the Resurrection Extras ROM set, screenshots are under the Action folder inside the Artwork folder. Uh, in this case we've just got two D-Box Arts, so that just goes in the Box Art folder. 3D Box Art goes in the Box Art 3D. Logos, uh, in this case with the Resurrection Extra uh, ROM sets, they're under the Title folder. So inside the Titles folder is the Logos folder. So a logo is either the Title screen or an actual logo. The Mix folder is for mixed images. Now these are created using external programs, so on the PC you can use an application called scraper.exe or fastscraper.bat. Uh, you can Google those and essentially what that does is it will take your ROMs, it will check, a ha it will hash them, it will check against the database and it will download the appropriate artwork. Now you can set them up to download mix images, either mix3 or mix4. You can also use Universal XML Scraper, which does the exact same thing as scraper.exe, but you can customize the multi images. Now it's a little more complicated, the Universal XML Scraper, but once you get the hang of it, it's easy enough to do. Um, there is also a Python script uh, on the Xbox, and if you want to run it on Windows, you can which will take, if you use Universal XML Scraper or Scraper.exe or FastScraper.bat which uses Scraper.exe but it's just more user friendly uh, when you scan your ROMs and it creates a game list.xml now you can either use the Xbox if you don't have Python installed in your PC or you can use the script on your PC essentially what you can do is you can create synopsis files for your ROMs. So the way Synopsis works or the way images work is they must match the name of your ROM files. So the Synopsis information and stuff that's on MU Station or XBMC MU Station, sorry, is set up for the Resurrection Extras ROM sets. If you don't have those ROM sets, you won't get synopsis information, you will need to scan your ROMs with a PC application to get the game list.xml and then use my Python script to create synopsis files for your ROMs. So you can scan your ROMs in, run the Python script and it will give you synopsis files for your ROM names. It will also give you images for your ROM names and essentially it just it makes life easier. It saves you having to rename all your ROMs. But anyway, so back to artwork. Uh, the scraper stuff can be another video at some point when I can be bothered. But that should be self explanatory as well. Uh, box art. We just want to fire these in. And that's your artwork installed. So 
that's it. So that's me now got six ROMs installed with artwork. So now we head over to the Xbox and like I said at the beginning, the quality is going to be different because I have to use my phone to record that uh, and I have to use a headset to record the audio, but it's the best I can do. So I'll jump over to the Xbox and show you what to do on there. Right, so on to the Xbox side of things. So when you first put XBMC MU station, you'll get a welcome screen. Just saying this pet project. It just gives you some information on where things go, uh, where emulators go, where ROMs go. And it also tells you that some emulators require the ROMs to be placed in the in with the emulator files. Um, Atari Jaguar and Neo Geo C D systems both require that. Also tells you where your media goes. So as an example, it tells you the media. The system is whatever system, SNES in the case, as I showed you on the PC. Um, and it also lets you calibrate your screen. Now the reason you calibrate your screen is because it then makes everything fit properly. There's also a script that runs which populates the menu counters and as you see there's Super Nintendo and there's nothing there. If you select it, it will ask you to scan the ROMs. Now, normally uh, I suggest transferring ROMs after you've set up MU, XBMC MU Station. But obviously for this tutorial, I showed you how to do it on the PC side of things and then came to the Xbox. Um, but in this case, you just press start, go down to other settings and down to auto scan ROMs. Now, if you are adding a new system and new ROMs, you would select update selected systems. That What that will do is it will load a menu where you, you can then pick the system you added ROMs to and it will then scan them. In this case, this is a fresh install, so we select all scan ROMs. Now, you'll be asked if you would like to use the names found in the synopsis files or the basically if you select no we'll use the ROMs file names. So if you have your ROMs named a specific way and you want to keep them that way then you select no. If you want to have the display name shown as whatever the synopsis file name or the, whatever the synopsis has as the internal name you can select yes. In this case I'm just going to pick yes. It will then extract the synopsis files for whatever systems that I've included synopsis for. Now it only extracts the synopsis files for the systems it finds. Um, there's no point in extracting every system's synopsis file. Um, it's on a per use basis essentially. So essentially if it finds the emulator and the ROMs it will extract them. So that's it done. That's you now got your ROMs added, scanned in, and you now have your ROMs. Now, I just want to say, uh, when I was transferring XBMC MU Station to the ePartition, you've seen that some files didn't transfer. Now, the keep saved files are required, and they don't transfer if you use Unleash X as the FTP server. So what I'd advise doing is if you're using an XBMC, you won't have any problems. FTP in the files over, they'll get transferred. It just seems to be an Unleash X problem. It treats them as folders. I don't know why, and I've no way of fixing it. But the keep saved files are required because the emulators use them to know that you've set up the default settings for the emulators. So when you select a ROM, it will load straight into that ROM. And that's basically how it works. That's they're needed basically. So if they don't transfer, load XBMC. So do a IGR, you'll load into the welcome screen. Just 
delete the emulators folder and transfer the emulators folder back over and everything will get transferred that time. It just seems to be it's an Unleash X problem and it will never be fixed because there's no source code. So uh, I've just realised something. The default layout in the home is wrong. Uh, what I say, I synopsis anyway. So I will need to fix that because it should be this. Um, so anyway, so that's the ROMs scanned in with synopsis and information. And to load them, you just press the A button and your ROM will load. Now, some systems that use uh, CD based media. Uh, use Q and bin files only. Sega CD is one of them. Um, it doesn't support ISO MP3, the emulator that's used. Um, I couldn't get the emulator that supposedly supports ISO and MP3 to actually work. So I use Q and bin files, or Q and image files, or Q and ISO files. Um, basically it only scans for Q files. Same with PlayStation. Well, PlayStation scans for ISO and Q files, but it's recommended to use Q files with the PlayStation emulator. Uh, it's actually recommended to use Q files with any of the CD-based emulators uh, because you get audio, music, properly. Uh, but anyway, that's how you scan your ROMs in. And I'll just fix the bugs that I found there. Um, there's also another one. Oh, uh, if you use the MAME emulator, now I recommend MAME O Extra or MAME O. It's MAME O Extra. I'm sure that's what's called. Version 2.0. You will need to patch it. If you don't patch it, the ROMs will have to get in the ROMs folder inside its, its emulator directory. So all you would do is you'd come down to the patch emulator saves path, you would press A, you would select MAME, it will patch the XBE file, that's you done. Um, another thing you can do is you can set custom paths, excuse me, for the emulators folder, the ROMs folder or the media folder. What this allows you to do is have XBMC, XBMC emu station on the E partition for the fastest boot time possible and have your hundreds of gigabytes worth of ROMs, ISOs, media, video, etc. on your F partition or your G partition. So it gives you the best of both of us. It gives you the fastest boot time plus the large size for all your ROMs, images, preview videos, etc. Um, that should be self explanatory I'll just show you actually. So in my case I have them on the F partition. This is my custom setup. So I would go in, I would select these. And now when I scan in my ROMs, it would scan in those ROMs. So if I pick auto scan ROMs, pick yes. That will now start processing those ROM files. So yeah, essentially that's how you set it up on the PC, transfer it to the Xbox and then scan in your ROMs. It's not very difficult. If you pick, you transfer your ROMs over and you pick, you scan for ROMs and nothing is picked up, so no ROMs get scanned in, they're the wrong type. Most emulators will use zip files, but if you extract them, they should be scanned in correctly. It's more a problem with uh, image based games, so CD based games. You put an ISO in there and it won't scan in. That's because the emulator doesn't work with ISO. If it doesn't work with ISO, I don't scan them in. So basically, use Q and bin files or Q and image files. Basically, use Q files with all your ISO or your CD based media and you'll no problem scanning stuff in. Um, oh, I the FPS has got Snobs' files as well now. I forgot about that. Um, 
so yeah that's how you do everything so hopefully this helps folk and I can get stopped getting pestered with how do I scan ROMs, how do I do this, how do I do that because it's the exact same process for every other emulator yeah so cheers and cheerio